Okay? And then you have the anarchists. Do you know of some anarchist movement going on, past, present? <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of some of them. It starts with O, not the big O. <laughs> She's on the other side of the fence. It is so poorly organized. <laughs> Occupy movement. They don't believe in leaders. They say we are not, we don't have leaders. We just go out and protest. And it's all by tweeting nowadays, right? Okay, we will now go to uh, Wall Street, six o'clock. Well, we'll have a mob protests at that time. Okay, now they'll tweet. Let's all go now to Chicago this Saturday at six o'clock. So it's just people with no leadership, it's just people doing things on their own, which is very different from the Marxist-Leninist approach. You need the leadership, the vanguard of the revolution. Okay, but for the anarchists, no, we do it on our own, on the local level. Okay, so anarchist women too were very much involved. So you have some revolutionary Marxists like Rosa Luxemburg said the woman's struggle is not separate from the labor struggle. Okay, Rosa Luxemburg. I think she was Polish. Right, Dr. Horry? Okay. Now, so according to... You know some of the anarchists on the May 1st um, movement. Yeah. Yeah, right. The, you, you know, you don't even know really May 1st, but all over the world, it's Labor Day. And it came from Chicago. And you just reneged on your heritage. Okay. What's Labor Day here? First Monday of September. Yeah, right. But everywhere else in the world, it's first of May. See? And it came from Chicago. The anarchists made this holiday important. You know why there's a five work day, eight hour work day, minimum wage? It's those people organizing the labor movement, the, the unions. Then we're now saying, oh, they're troublemakers. Be careful what you wish for. If they'll be taken away, no minimum wage, no living wage. The unions fought for all of these that we just take for granted as natural and normal and we're entitled to. No. Unions fought for them. Whoops, are there manager people here? <laughs> Just say it, okay? Okay, so these are the things you look for in feminist pedagogy. You're challenging the ideology, the dominant ideology. It could be male. You know, here you talk of patriarchy as, a, as an abstract concept, a noun. Where I come from, when my dad died, I have to talk to a real, living, breathing patriarch with a face. Okay, so when my father died, uh, now it's the next older person closest to us who's in charge. I know how it looks like. He's balding, he's got eyeglasses, he's very slim. Here it's just a concept. Us is real. He makes all the decisions for us. So that's real patriarchy to the bone. Okay, here, but anyway, it's all over. Okay, it's very deeply uh, ingrained. To, to contest, to not to accept the hegemony, the dominance of such an ideology. And then expose the power, like Juanita Johnson Bailey did, like, excuse me, it's the same curriculum, it's the same context, it's the same textbook, but there's a deep ideology of anti-womenism and anti-people of color. We just don't know, it's just there. We have to unmask that, the power that white male have. This is according to Juanita uh, Johnson Bailey. And then overcome alienation, like, okay, I'm a woman, I have to do this, I have to stay this, I should just keep quiet. And they'll slap you in the face, like, wake up. That's not your role in life. Speak out loud. Fight for your rights. And you have to learn to be free. Don't just say, well, you know, it's the victim syndrome, right? Maybe some men would beat a woman and say, you're useless, without me you're nothing. Then the person gets brainwashed, right? Without me you're nothing, just stay there, and so on. And, and they're being told, oh, if you're doing radical feminism, no, no, no. The woman has to be set free and the woman has to set herself free too. And then use logic, not just, you need a 
balance of passion and reason. Okay? Yeah, you know, we fall in love, fine, that's okay. But you also have to balance that with reason. And then practice democracy. Which means listening to people, taking turns, making decisions collectively, and so on and so forth. Now, there are three types of knowledge. Now, when you do liberation, feminism, and so on. One is technical. Okay, we say, uh, I want to be an engineer. So I have to know vibration, I have to know nanomaterials, I have to know robotics, I have to know electric circuits. Okay, that's bookish knowledge. But to know how to do things, it's practical knowledge. You have to actually have lab experience. But then, if you want liberation, you have to kind of do everything mentioned earlier, unmask the ideology, expose the hegemony, uh, question power, and then see your own role in your liberation, okay, as women. Now, Tisda, I'm also lucky to have met her in a few conferences. She's a nice, uh, I'm sure Dr. Horan knows her too. So she said to do uh, a post-structuralism simply means, you can tell me what it means. Okay, give up. Okay, give it up. Okay, in the past we say male or male, female or female. That's the critique of the first and second wave of feminism. We'll, we'll talk about that in a while. Uh, Post-structuralism is saying, no, no, no. Don't assume all men are the same. Don't assume all women are the same. They're not. Okay, there can be all kinds of mutation or differences. So you cannot just say there are only two types. Binary thinking is very deeply ingrained in Western thinking from Plato you know, to Hegel, from Greece to Germany to the US. It's just one or the other, okay? But they're saying, no, you should go beyond the binary way of looking at things. There's more to it than just one or the other, okay? And then we have to, again, just like the other slide, this is just a fine tuning of the other slide. By the way, if you type my name and feminism, you can find this in slideshare or academia.edu and you can download my PowerPoint file. I forgot to mention. Okay, and uh, so you don't need to copy if you don't want to. But if you insist, fine. Right. <laughs> okay, okay, now, so you have to know power is central when you're doing feminist uh, pedagogy. You should unmask that there is power in any relationship. A teacher-student relationship, that's power relations. Who gives grades, right? And if you're carpooling, who's driving? Whose car is it? There's power relations everywhere. And like it or not, economic power oftentimes dictates. Whoever earns more kind of will be louder at home. Male or female, right? See, you're laughing. See, there's something about power and economic power. They kind of go together. Not automatically, okay? <clears throat> and then, again, this is where positionality is important. That's why when I write papers for publication and for conferences, they say, spell out your positionality. So to me, it's a common word now, but word will always reject the word and say it doesn't exist. I'd say ignore all, okay? Because in feminist vocabulary, it's very important. I have to say I'm Asian male writing about feminism. That's why Joan was saying, yeah, it's the first time for her to listen to a man. I said, yeah. See, I, and I admit I have a different point of view. And each person is a different point of view. So I have to lay it down on the table and tell you this is what I am. Okay, and then look at power. And let's look at it as a problem that we will uh, dig deeper into. Okay, so these would be continuation. Now, so historically, there are different stages. The pre-feminist stage, and then the feminism stage and the so-called post-feminism stage, so-called. Okay, so, Hua Mu Lan, Hua means flower, Mu means wood or tree, Lan means orchid. It's the flower, uh, orchid flower in the tree. 
But then when you watch Formula, oh my goodness, it's so butchered by Hollywood. Disney's version of world history is a mess. They romanticize and like, this is not what I read. I went to a Chinese school in the Philippines with in classical Chinese, I read, this is not the formula I know. Okay? So they kind of romanticize how Mulan look. You've heard of Mulan, right? Okay. The same thing with uh, Jasmine and Aladdin. They're the fairest and the most British sounding, and all of the other Arabs are dark and have a thick Arab accent. It's like, okay, the good people have to have fair skin and have to have the proper accent. And if you're the bad guys, you are darker skin and you have bad accent. That's in Disney movies. It's deeply rooted and we don't even realize it. So be careful. Even fairy tale and children's storybooks, be careful what you teach your kids. Okay, <clears throat> ancient Greece, you have Plato was a famous person. He said, <clears throat> the title, of, subtitle of a chapter of his book, it's called Equality of Women. So if you read it, he said, women and men are naturally equal in everything except in strength. I said, okay, maybe in, on the average it's true. But Aristotle, his student, had a totally different view of women. Women are naturally mu uh, mutilated. What happened to the student? He had a crop view of equality of men and women. Okay? <clears throat> and in ancient uh, Greece, women were not considered citizens. When you say citizen, it's the male property owners. Children, women, and slaves, and foreigners who were called idiots were not counted as citizens in those days. So if you were a woman in ancient Greece, think of you going back there in the times of Spartacus or 300, and now you have a totally different you. Your experience will be so different. <clears throat> so in the medieval period, you have some people who are Bible quoting. This is one version, okay? So that's why we say post-structural. One thing has different interpretation, not just one. This is somebody who's protesting this. Women should. I don't believe this. Huh? I'm mouthing what he's written. I don't believe what I'll be saying. Just don't misquote me. Be quiet. Be keepers of home. Doing dishes, laundry, ironing. Be submissive to husband. Be silent in church. Be takers of children. And be modestly dressed. And he had this quotation from the Bible. But then you have the... Uh, a theology of liberation, uh, people, who would say, no, if you have the image of God, Imago Dei, then if all of us have the image of God, then women and men have the same image. Even if God were a male or a female, 